Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Balakakis, for the invitation. I am grateful for participating in this forum for the first time, and I'm also quite younger in the National Bank of Greece. I've been part of its staff since May. But I will be discussing something that has troubled the international community since the beginning of our century, and it's also something that has found no answer and no resolution, because it talks about transiting into something that is going to be greener and more friendly to the environment and to people. We've got new technologies and new solutions that have been discussed for three decades now, ever since, uh, for example, uh, 2014, we saw that we had offload and uh, new recommendations, new guidelines from international organizations like the EU, OECD, UNO, and uh, ISO. And uh, we know that this means that we had to come up with a Green Bible which allowed in the, for the creation of new authorities that will look at uh, the targets that bring together the environment, social, and governance. Um, um, objectives going beyond legal restraints and looking into the entire ecosystem as a whole. Ever since 2014, the European Commission has revised priorities, especially with respect to the impact on society, and created an action plan that included, among others, improving transparency in social and environmental information. The first part led to a guideline being issued about uh, publicizing non-financing information by uh, large-scale uh, institutions, and then we moved into the sustainability angle, and it was uh, it all culminated in uh, initiatives uh, such as uh, the one in 2015, where the UN uh, adopted the agenda in 2030 that we are all familiar with, with sustainable goal, development goals, uh, that target at society and the environment, governance, all aspects of human life. Ever since the Paris Agreement on climate change and the emissions reduction, the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, we are targeting climate neutral European Union by 2050. And there are also uh, in measures as to the uh, certified auditors and uh, that have to do with reporting on non-financial information. Uh, this has been targeted by the World Bank as well. It looks into green finance. It takes into consideration environmental issues, respect of human rights, combating against fraud and bribery, uh, involving uh, transparency, uh, improving transparency, involving the legal experts, um, developing and implementing climate-related environmental disclosure, and reporting standards, looking into business relations, networks that may lead to negative impact on uh, such uh, on, on all those fields. At the same time, we looked at public debt, uh, disclosure of other non-financial information, looking into sustainable investments, and the European Union came up with an action plan to finance sustainable development, uh, looking first of all into sustainable investments. And within this framework, we have the directive on the new framework that facilitates sustainable investments and, of course, the um, instruments, financial instruments, that are going to help um, reach sustainable development targets. What we mean by environmental sustainability is something that uh, comes under the definition of Article 9 of the regulation that looks at adaptation to climate change, tackling climate crisis, sustainable use of uh, water and maritime, freshwater and maritime environments and habitats, protection and uh, restoration, rehabilitation of biodiversity. Within the framework of the European Union and financing of sustainable development, all borders uh, private or public entities need to take into consideration sustainability whenever they finance actions based on the ESG indicators. 
And this uh, was uh, set forth despite the fact that, that there is a confusion as to the ESG criteria with respect to assessment of those, of said criteria. Before that, uh, we know that uh, the financing sector needs to um, adopt a strategy that will allow it to uh, tackle specific investing uh, resources and sources. We've got exclusionary screening, which uh, allows for the exclusion of several activities and operations. We've got best-in-class selection, where we opt for the um, for a sector's businesses based on their performance on ESG criteria. We also have financing addressed to emerging uh, sectors, uh, uh, companies, and then instead of evaluating ESG, uh, based on an investment angle, we also take into consideration all financing criteria that in including risks and opportunities for the investors. And we all have the open uh, model analysis that allows us to take into consideration not just the ESG criteria, but also how financing based on the ESG criteria can be assessed based on other criteria um, uh, by the EU as well. On this model that I have on the slide, we see how we can also add new approaches like the environmental approach. For example, a business plan can take into consideration when evaluating, evaluating ESG indicators, which need to be as marked in their use as assessments built based on classic economic indicators. And we're also looking at the three categories of indicators, meaning environment, society and governance. And here we have a greater importance attributed to environmental indicators. I've managed to calculate that to approximately 35%, the remaining being um, allocated in between the other two pillars. We're also using indicators as portrayed in the guidelines by the chambers of Athens and other bodies, both in Greece and in the European Union, all financing organizations and institutions based on their own mentality and mindset and cultural corporate culture can uh, take on additional assessment criteria. What is important is to include in the final assessment the environmental indicators. We need to look at uh, protection of the environment, and this might be even more important than viability and sustainability of companies. And uh, sometimes we see that in retail, for example, we have uh, in service provision, we have a shift in what is being used for the assessment. So after decades decades of um, moving along the same models and patterns, we see that there is an adaptation, a transformation on how we assess and how we tackle the new challenges on behalf of corporate mentality. What we're trying to do, of course, is take into consideration the bleak future to which we are led if we continue with the human activity as it stands today. We cannot proceed with business as usual because we have climate crisis ahead of us and happening right now, which means that we need to take into consideration the SDGs and ESG indicators. And that will allow us to use our uh, own methods and approaches in order to um, ta include the environment in all our operations and not have ESG indicators alone, try to bear the burden of moving forward to a more green approach and operation. Mm -hmm.